Well guys, today Toyota has finally told us the pricing for their 2022 Tundra hybrids and not only that, but the MPGs. Now I know you guys may have already seen this, but in this video, I'm gonna talk to you all about how I'm a little let down. So hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So at seven o'clock this morning, Toyota allowed us journalists to basically lift the embargo and tell you all what the MPG was for the hybrid iForce Max Tundras and the pricing. So I did not make a video that early in the morning. When these things happen super early in the morning, I like to post on my Instagram, especially when it's a little controversial like this, uh, to see what people's thoughts are. And in this video, I'm taking off the Toyota fanboy hat and honestly agreeing with a lot of people on my Instagram who are complaining about the MPGs to an extent. So let's get into the pricing first and then we'll talk about MPGs. So getting on into the pricing guys, I'll put it right here on the screen. It's red because it came from the embargo sheet that I was given, but long story short, all the hybrids when compared to their normal iForce model, so limited on up to platinum and 1794, they pr the price is increased by $3,400. Now, if you are looking at that strictly from an MPG standpoint, are you gonna save $3,400 over time? Then do not get the iForce Max hybrid model. Do not get it at all. Get a normal iForce motor. If you are strictly only looking at it at an MPG standpoint. Now, if you're looking at it from a power standpoint, definitely get the truck. It's a very, very good truck. But MPG standpoint, not worth it. Another thing to note here on the list, guys, TRD Pro pricing. I was very close. I thought that truck was gonna be around 64, 65, but it's 66, 805. Uh, and I have that number in my head because I want that dang truck. But to my knowledge, that truck comes with absolutely everything that you have seen from journalists, photos, everything on that truck. The panoramic moonroof, the heated steering wheel, the TRD light bar, like nothing is an option on that truck except for like dealer accessories. So to my knowledge, it's a completely loaded Tundra with all the TRD Pro accessories. And same with the capstone for $73,000, which is crazy. But that truck has literally every option that you're able to put onto a 1794 with the acoustic glass and the semi aniline leathers. Very, very, very crazy plush interior. But if it was me, in that realm for high-end luxury Toyota trucks, I'm gonna go with the Platinum or the 1794 with the TRD off-road package. So that was my opinion after I drove the Capstone. I'm gonna have more videos on that, but real quick, that was just my opinion. So with pricing out of the way, guys, again, you can pause that screen if you want. Let's talk about the MPGs. So finally, we have the MPGs. iForce Max is in red and the normal iForce is in black. But you guys can see it right here. Uh, when it comes to the two wheel drive version of this truck, you're getting 20 miles per gallon in the city, 24 on the highway. That highway number is the exact same as the normal iForce motor, which is crazy, but not really. There's no cylinder deactivation. There's nothing crazy different in the hybrid model except for it being a little bit heavier. So your combined goes up because it takes the average because the city, the truck's able to shut off, it's able to power itself real quick to get up to speed. You're able to go 18, you're able to go 18 miles an hour or lower in electric mode. So city is gonna be a little bit better. Um, and that is compared to the SR. So like it's the same as the SR, which is a lighter detuned truck, and you gain one mile per gallon over the normal SR5 trucks on the highway for a combined total basically of two more MPGs. Now when you go to the four wheel drive version of the truck, uh, the SR5, it, it doesn't really go up that much. It stays the exact same again. So city goes up two miles per gallon, and then your average goes up two miles per gallon as well. And then the pro, as you can see with the asterisks right there, 19 in the city, 21 on the highway with a combined average of 20. So let me know down in the comments real quick before I just get into why as to what you guys think about that. Because on paper, it is, it is a letdown, especially when you see the diesels from Chevy getting upwards of 30 miles per gallon, the Ram Eco Diesel getting that. Now I know reliability, I know that, I get that. But when 
people are only owning vehicles right now for like two to three years, it seems like, reliability can only get you so far because the market is constantly changing and people are in and out of vehicles like they are their pants. It's crazy. So I was hoping that I knew it wasn't gonna be in the 30s, that's just crazy for a turbocharged motor, but I was hoping that it would at least be like 26 to 28 on the highway. But again, it's a parallel hybrid system. It's not anything like the crossovers, it doesn't have cylinder deactivation, nothing that makes it that much different than the normal iForce and the fact it's heavier. So no real gain at all, at all, on the highway, which is crazy. So city guys, you're gonna, you're gonna get two more miles per gallon. So the what Toyota was saying in all these events, and it makes sense why they were pushing it, is they are going for more performance with the iForce Max than they are efficiency. So that's what they told us a lot at the events, and they never gave us any info as to what the MPGs were until uh, this event here. But the fact though, guys, that you're getting 437 horsepower and 580 foot-pounds of torque, but you're still able to maintain relatively decent gas mileage for a truck is absolutely awesome. And that torque, that full torque, comes on at 2400 RPM. So kind of like a diesel where it has good low end torque. As I've driven the truck, and I'm not trying to say that this truck is the best one out there because in all fairness, I haven't driven a new Ram and I haven't driven a new Ford Power Boost and I haven't driven a new Chevy. But what I can tell you is this truck scoots. This truck hauls. I've driven a 2021 5.7 liter iForce Tundra. This new hybrid system, at least from what I remember in my butt dyno, smokes that truck. I had a 2014 Chevy Silverado, which ironically got like 22 miles per gallon on the highway with a V8, like my best that I got with it, 22, 23. That truck hauled, but this one just smokes it, man. This And, and it's not just speed. Trucks are not meant to be drag racer trucks, but the fact that you have that power is awesome. Now, again, the hybrid doesn't technically tow as much as the normal iForce does because of the added weight but I can guarantee you, you'll feel if you have a 9,000 pound trailer in a normal iForce and a 9,000 pound trailer with the iForce Max, because you shouldn't be maxing these trucks out, you should be comfortable with what you're towing, guarantee you, you're gonna have a better time with the hybrid motor with that better low end torque and just more horsepower, bigger torque curve over the normal iForce. So guys, I just wanted to explain why I was upset with the numbers. I wish they really could have achieved more, especially with the 10-speed transmission, especially with it being a little turbocharged engine too. But when you're throttling out those turbos, you're forcing air into this engine, it's kind of working hard because it is a heavy truck and it is a small displacement engine, even though you do have hybrid assistance from it, I was just, I was really, really hoping for at least 28 at like the absolute max. So we still get 24, that's still way better than last generation model. Obviously, we will see when you put bigger tires on the truck, when you lift the truck, when you start adding more weight to the truck, what real world will be for these things. And I will test it for you guys too if I ever get a press vehicle that's a hybrid. Uh, but those are the numbers. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. If you all are new around here, definitely consider subscribing. Returning subscribers as always, I appreciate your support. I'll catch you all in the next video. All right, see you later.